Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the Panorama tool. You can access it by tapping the Mode button down here, and the fifth button is the Panorama tool right just here. Okay, so first let's switch to the hybrid map for this demonstration, just like this. And let's change our focal length to 24 millimeters, like this. And then let's put the camera in portrait orientation. Okay, so when we go back to the display, first of all, we can see some values up here along the top. The first one is the total angle of view of your panorama. Next is the focal length you've chosen to use for each photograph. And then whether landscape or portrait orientation. And finally, the results that we've calculated. And what these results mean is if we want to shoot a panorama with a 24 millimeter focal length lens, in a portrait orientation to cover a 180 degree field of view, then we're gonna to need to take five photos horizontally and rotate by 37.5 degrees after each shot. And then also we're gonna actually need to take two rows of the five photos and rotate 55 degrees vertically after the first row for a total of 10 photographs. Okay, so now let's look, if you tap right here, this opens up a, a bunch of options where you can adjust some settings related to your panorama image. And the last entry right here is to adjust the multiple row panorama, and the current setting is to keep the 2 to 1 ratio. But if you choose, you can select to have just one row if you don't want to do a multi-row pano like this. And then you can also choose to adjust the rotation increment right here. Now if you'll see, I use a bunch of different options, but I usually select 5 degrees, since the only time I need to rotate the panning head by degrees is at night when I'm shooting the Milky Way arch, for example. And it's much easier to rotate by 5 degrees minimum in that case. And you can also adjust the overlap between the two shots. You can do that right here. And the good range is usually between 25 and 50 percent. The default value is 25 percent, which is usually enough for daytime. However, during the day, I don't really ever use this feature because I'm shooting panos during the day and I can just look at the viewfinder and I can see exactly how much overlap to have. The only time I really use this uh, degree feature is when I'm shooting at night and that's when it's way too dark to see anything meaningful through the camera viewfinder and that's when I use this feature the most. And in fact, I'd rather use this feature to figure out the rotation angle and ju then just use the tripod panning head to make sure you rotate the correct angle between shots. And in practice, when I'm, we're doing this, we actually prefer to use a larger overlap percentage, for example, 40 to 50%. Let's choose 40% right here. And through a, lots of trial and error, we found that it's easier for the Pano stitching software to do the stitching with more overlap. And now when we go back, you can see it says uh, six photos and to rotate 30 degrees after each image. That means in the field, all we need to do is to look at the panning head scale and then simply rotate by 30 degrees. Easy. Without using this feature, a lot of times you just have to kind of guess at the rotation at night or to try to look through the camera viewfinder and rotate the correct amount. And if this, this approach might work for a moonlit night, but if there's no moon, it's really hard to see anything in a dark location, especially when you're up, shooting up towards the sky. And then if you rotate too much or too little, little for one of the shots, you won't be able to stitch them together and the whole pano project is ruined. And trust me, from personal experience, this happens. So just to be safe, look at their suggested rotation angle and rotate accordingly between the shots. You can even remember the rotation uh, by heart for a 24 millimeter you can see 24 millimeter focal length lens, you can see the rotation is 30 degrees. And if we change that to uh, 35 millimeters like this, that changes uh, to 20 degrees. So just plan these, uh, plan your, your panorama beforehand with the app, and then you can remember these values so you don't have to you know, look them up at night. Okay, so now when we go back to the map, let's take a look at this. You can see here is this green fan as the uh, entire field of view of the pano. And if you look within it, you can see the field of view of each pano shot. Now this line on either side here and over here, these are the two edges of the entire panorama. And if you want, you can just manually adjust these pano edges on the map by dragging the lines like this. See that? And you could even go all the way to 360 degrees. And check this out, you can also create a 720 degree pano. Now what we mean by 720 degrees is simply the whole photosphere for a virtual reality panorama, for example. So just select uh, 360 degrees here. So we'll just do that. 
And then over here in these options, we're going to select a two to one ratio. And when we do that, what we get are the values here for the settings for the 720 photosphere. 12 shots rotating 30 degrees horizontally after each shot with four rows and rotating 40 degrees vertically after each row. So that's a grand total of 48 photos where they can then be stitched into a photosphere. Now in this case, we saw we just used a 24 millimeter lens and it's easy to change this using this app uh, to a 35 millimeter lens, for example, to see how that works. And that will obviously get much higher resolution. We do that like this. Uh, but now we're looking at six rows with 18 photos per row for a grand total of 108 photos. Told you it would be higher resolution. <laughs> if we go to a wider angle lens on the other hand, like this, is 16 millimeters. So we can change it to 16 millimeters. Then we'd only have nine by three or 27 photographs. And the other thing is, if you so if you shoot 720 photos here, you'll find this tool to be super useful. And while we can also simulate the pano in this uh, VR viewfinder, we won't cover that here, but we're going to do that in the Milky Way video tutorial where we talk about the Milky Way arch panorama, and then we'll talk about it more in more detail. So that's really all there is to it, to the panorama tool. Until next time, this is Mike Shaw saying best of luck planning your panoramas with Planet.